Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about five reasons why you want an ebb and flow hydroponic system. Five reasons why they're awesome, and a couple of reasons why they're not so great. And I'm going to do them in reverse order, counting down from five to one to increase suspense. Here we go. Number five, they're super easy to build and cheap to build. I built mine out of a masonry tub that I got from Home Depot, some PVC fittings, and some old hydrogen that I had laying around. Now, I'm not going to show you how to build them. You can kind of look at how mine is. There's, they're, like I said, there's easy. There's tons of tutorials out there. Um, there's even some fittings that you can buy on Amazon specifically designed for an ebb and flow system or flood and drain, whatever you'd like to call it. But I didn't know that and I already had the PVC stuff so I went with the PVC stuff and it works. Number four, they're super low maintenance. They're easy to use. Once it's set up, like you've got your lights, you've got your pump, you've got everything on a timer, you've got the water in the reservoir, it can come from a bucket, whether you put nutrients in or a fish tank or aquaponics or whatever, once it's set up, it just goes. And that's kind of all you've got it to do. You do have to change the water or add more water with more nutrients once in a while if you're using a reservoir. But I just have a five gallon bucket sitting next to it. Uh, I put the new nutrients in, swap the bucket out. Um, that's all there is to it. There is one thing that you do have to worry about in an ebb and flow system that you don't have to worry about in a cracky setup or maybe even a DWC setup is called, and that's nutrient buildup. As the water comes in and recedes and comes in and recedes and comes in and recedes, it can leave large deposits of minerals and salts in the medium and on the roots, which can actually stop the plants from being able to take up the nutrients they need to grow. So in order to fix this, you just run a bucket of clean water through it every once in a while, flush out those salts, and you're good to go. Number three easy plant exchange. One of the drawbacks of a crack key setup is that you have to have plants of similar water requirements and similar age. Otherwise the plants that have uh, more, they use more water will outcompete the smaller plants and the smaller plants won't get the water they need and they won't do as well um, or they won't grow at all. So in an ebb and flow system each plant has the same access to water as every other plant regardless of the age of the plant. So when a plant matures I can, t I can harvest it, I can drop in a new seedling, and I can just keep the system going. Number two, less chance of root-borne diseases, or root rot, or pythium root rot, or whatever you want to call it. In a cracky or DWC setup, or some other type of setup where you've got roots sitting in the water all of the time, there's a higher chance that you can have bacteria that forms in the water, attacks the roots, and gives you what's called root rot, or pythium root rot. In a cracky or DWC setup, one way to combat this is to introduce oxygen into the water or good bacteria or hydrogen peroxide or something else like that. In an ebb and flow system, you don't really have the same problem with the stagnant water or the water sitting on the roots because every time the water recedes, it draws new oxygen into the root zone and it kind of eliminates that problem of the bacteria being able to build up in the water and just suffocate those roots. So, less chance of root-borne diseases. <laughs> And for me, the number one reason to build an ebb and flow system is space. In this same footprint that I have this masonry tub, I can put two of my traditional crack key or DWC tubs. And in these things, I can put six plants each, meaning 12 plants. And then I've got the net cups and I've got the side walls and, and just the space that the containers themselves take. Well, in this thing, I can put 25 plants and they're spaced appropriately for spinach or every four to six inches and I can kind of treat it more like a soil garden. I've just got a bigger growing space. I can put different plants in there that have, that, they put different plants in there that take up different amounts of space where I can start new plants on one side and have old plants on the other side. It's just a nice open field, so to speak. And I can get a lot more in the same footprint that I can in another type of system. So those are the five reasons why I think an ebb and flow system is fantastic. Now for a couple of reasons why they're maybe not so good for you. The first drawback I see is that you have to have a pump. 
So you cannot do a passive setup without any electricity. If you wanted to do this outside, you still have to have electricity. And adding a pump in there is just one more component that can fail. So, I mean, I did a Dutch bucket system last summer. I did some tomatoes and my pump went out in the middle of the summer. And that's a problem if it's 100 degrees outside and you've got tomatoes that are very thirsty, I had to scramble to get a new pump. Um, it's just one more component that can fail. So that's a drawback. The second drawback is it's much harder to clean. In a cracky system, you have one grow. Take the plants out, wash the bucket or container, new plants in, off and running. In a DWC system, deep water culture, you can have an identical container. You can take the plants out of the old container, put them in the new container, wash the previous container, and you're fine. In this system, you can't really do that. You have to take the whole thing down, clean out the medium, clean everything out. Every once in a while, you're going to take the whole thing down to give it a good cleaning. Uh, I don't think it'll require as much cleaning as like a DWC, like I said, because it's not sitting in water all the time, but it's still going to take some, you're still going to have to clean it every once in a while. So that's a drawback. So in the end, you have to just choose the system that's right for you. Uh, weigh the pros and cons, learn what they are for each type of system. Hydroponics is just a way to grow stuff. And if you do Cracky, DWC, Hydro, uh, Ebb and Flow, NFT, whatever the millions of ways there are, they're all going to work, but they all have their pros and cons. And one may work better for you than another, depending on what you're trying to grow. So do some research, look into it, try an Ebb and Flow system. Super easy, super simple, and good luck, happy growing, and thanks for watching.